as for day three, we're going to be moving on to Bow the Visitor. Now, I know this might be a little unnecessary to mention, but this anime was actually one of my backup ones, because the one I was originally going to do here was Laughing Target, which was a horror OVA done by the same creator as Rema Half, but unfortunately, I ran into some issues with it, and I had to replace it with this one. But speaking of creators who have done some uh, very popular works, is that this one was actually made by the same creator as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the story. So there are two main characters in this one, and the first one happens to be Ikoro. So he's 17 years old, and he happened to get into a car accident, but then when he was being revived, the crazy doctor ended up turning him into a monster. And that monster is known as Bao. So to sum up Bao real quick is that it's a worm virus that affects the brain. And whenever he gets attacked, his skin breaks out and ends up changing color completely. And the more it progresses, the more crazy power he acquires. So the other character within this one is Samire, who is an orphan child who happens to have psychic powers. So how this one starts out is that it starts out on a train where Samire is being chased by a bunch of bad guys. And on the train they're doing experiments so she ends up seeing the awakening of uh, Ikaro transforming into Bao. So while he killed some fuck spoons, Samire happened to unbolt the cart of the train leaving them behind. So Samire and Ikaro are traveling together on the run to get away from the Doris organization. So I have to mention the doctor, and that happens to be Dr. Kazumi Nomi. So he's the one that gave the virus to Ikaro, and after seeing him run away and into the public, he really wants to see him dead. And thankfully for him, he actually did make a weakness to this virus, and that happens to be shooting it in the brain and while burning everything on fire. And as you would expect, do you really think the Doctor would be doing this himself? Of course not. So he has three assassins that are hunting down the two. And that's basically it for the story, so pretty much it's like two characters that are on the run away from an evil organization, and one of them is pretty much a monster with weird supernatural powers. So for anyone that is very well versed within the 2000 era of anime, doesn't this sound very familiar at all, at least the concept of it? Yeah, it's kind of like Elfin Lied, or Elfin Lead, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And speaking of that anime, I should also mention that yeah, dogs do die in this one as well, which I suppose is a very common thing within JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as well. But yeah, it's just one of those things I just kind of noticed between the two animes. I'm sure they are inspired by this. So now, let's get moving on to the show's animation, and the animation for this one is pretty fucking awesome. So the animation flow in general is really nice, and the character designs are also really cool looking. In fact, uh, Bao's design really does look like a JoJo character, which makes sense, but if I'd say that he looks like anyone within that series, he does remind me a little bit of Cars, mostly for the arm blade weapon that he uses. Also, the three assassin characters look pretty awesome, but I especially really like what they did with Dorbo, where he's a cyborg. And when you see half of his face exposed, he looks like the Terminator, but they put a lot of really cool details into it, and it looks great. And how could I not mention the gore effects in this one? Oh, damn, are they fucking awesome. Got lots of, like, people getting cut into pieces, you got people's, like, heads exploding, especially heads exploding, that happens quite a lot. And it makes it pretty over the top, but also very fun. So overall, the animation is really damn good, and it's also very impressive looking for the time, too. And as for the show's music, the music in this one is really good, it does have some pretty cool sounding songs, which I do like. But as good as they are, unfortunately there isn't a lot of music within this one. Also, there's really not a whole lot of atmospheric stuff. So it's kind of a shame that this one doesn't have that eeriness of it though. And I have to mention that the ending song just really didn't fit this one really well. It was just really cheesy sounding, I don't know, I just didn't really like it much. But despite these few things, I still like the music within it though, I still thought it was pretty cool. So now, as for the show's voice acting, now if you're gonna be watching this one in English, I have to say, it's pretty fucking terrible. So most of the voice actors here are a bunch of unknowns that I have no idea who the fuck they are. And I really can't praise any of them, but if there's one person I can be a little bit lenient on, would have to be the voice for the doctor. Now granted, I'm being pretty loosely here for that. His voice isn't really good, but I can at least say it did fit the character a lot better than like any of the other characters within this one. So if you do want to watch this one, I recommend going with the Japanese version. 
because a lot of the voices here really don't fit the characters and they just sound really bland and I don't know they just sound like they're just reading it off of a script which obviously that's what they're doing but you know they're just reading it without actually sounding like they're acting. So now that's my overall thoughts on Bao the Visitor is that I like it yeah I actually like it but I don't love it but I did have some fun with it. So yeah, the story in this one isn't really the most original thing ever, I mean just to make another comparison but only with something that's much older than this would be like Stephen King's Firestarter, but only that, you know, without pyrokinesis and shit. But while the plot is basic, I did have some fun with it for that the characters were pretty good for what they are, they weren't super in depth, but I did thought they were pretty good for what the story was. Also, the really great animation with over-the-top gore factor is just really awesome. So if you want some pretty well-detailed creative kills in this one, well, you definitely won't be disappointed. So yeah, this one is more mindless fun for me for that. It's not something I would consider to be super amazing or like a top favorite of mine, and I also wouldn't recommend it to everyone. But I did have fun with it, and like I said, if you do like uh, over-the-top gore stuff, I do think it's at least worth a watch. And maybe if you really like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I think you might get some kicks out of this one. But don't go into it expecting it to be like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because it's really not like that. At least in terms of story and character development. But if you go into it expecting a uh, mindless fun gore action, I do think it is a lot of fun. And with that said, despite some of its odd flaws, I still do like this one. <laughs> 